Let the peace, love, and blessings of the over God and his Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The hidden power in me. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth. Leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Revelation chapter 7, verses 15 to 17. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither will the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Second lesson, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 13 to 14. Meats for the belly, and the belly for our meats, but God shall destroy both it and them, no, the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body, and God has both raised up the Lord, and will also raise up us by his own power. Golden text, Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. My secret treasure, quote, <coughs> excuse me, brethren, this gospel is an entirely hidden one. It is a hidden treasure, but made available by the Father for the benefit of the luckiest ones in the world. Whoever receives a copy of this gospel must really be worthy of it and also bear the fruit of virtues embedded in it. Spiritual chorus. These weapons of war that I have with me are not weapons of the flesh. Take the whole world and give me Jesus. I said, take the whole world and give me Jesus, for I am satisfied. Brethren, my joy is found in God's desire to save the entire world. He has opened the doors of salvation to the entire world. God has come to shut the doors of the opposers of God against his sheep. You are yet to see these doors, but now you are going to see them. He has opened the doors of everlasting life and shut the doors of the wicked. As he declares, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That is a powerful statement. Everybody normally read this portion, but nobody has ever understood it. This gospel has paved the way for us and is today born into the family of God. People claim to be men of God, but do not realize that the food they eat is poison. The way they walk, what they eat how they live, and everything about them are dead. But the Father has all along been training us without our knowledge of this fact. Today, it has pleased the Father to make this revelation known to the entire world. You must know that the tabernacle of our Lord Jesus Christ is suitable for him. It is not an easy thing for anyone to recognize the abode of our Lord Jesus Christ. But today, 
I want to reveal it to you so that when you see it, you will recognize it. Sometimes I wonder, what has happened to me in 1967 when Nigeria and Biafra had a conflict? You all heard that we were taken to that house. It was a forbidden thing and a great offense for you to harbor an Igbo man in your house. And anybody that violated this law had his house and his life destroyed. By this time, there were two Arochukwu boys that were in the healing home. When some soldiers demanded for them, I asked myself, what I will tell the people when the war is over, as I told the brothers to stay back. The father knows what you are seeing here and all that is going on between brothers and sisters. These two Arochoku boys were not living in the healing home but were living in another compound and it was a brotherhood of the cross and stars member who went and reported the man who sheltered them and swore to destroy him because of that because of the threat the brother went and sent these Harochuku brothers out but the father took them in and a report was made at the station where I was wanted. When I got there, the head of the police, who was a Yoruba man called Richard and other brethren pleaded that I should not be locked up but that I should be taken to where those that are to be transferred to Lagos are kept. All this news of traveling to Lagos was false since the planes meant for Lagos were to take off at night. When I got in there, the place was filled up and they were complaining. Some say, for I came to see the father and I was accused of being a saboteur. One thing or the other and a lot of things were going on there. When they asked me what was my view, I told them that I have come to liberate all of them. Brethren, this is a very unique experience. I am telling you this because of its significance. As at then, I did not know what it stood for. It touched the heart of the head of the police, one Richard, a Yoruba man, that I should be put in a separate room. I told them that I have come to preach liberation to the people, but that I am not God. The father told me, now you are in heads, therefore you have to confess. No more eating of food or drinking of water. You must not urinate and you should not throw out any saliva because you are in heads. They brought me some food, but I instructed that it should be given to the inmates. Little did they understand the meaning of what was going on. There is a great significance in giving you this illustration. Spiritual Chorus Obedience is the spiritual weapon. Fight on, fight on. For you shall overcome. Beloved, 
if God decides to deliver you, all he requests from you is just obedience. He told me to remain the way I was and not to roam the place. I did exactly as I was told. Brethren, to bring that event of 1967 to an end, so that we may draw our lesson, I complied with the Father's instruction. I remained as I was instructed. Saturday went by, and on Sunday morning, there was morning service. I asked them to bring the Bible that I would advise the people till the following day, which was Monday. There was no mosquito bite, no disturbance throughout Saturday night. Only two things happened. Some people were released to their houses and some were sent to Lagos. Nobody among the officers talked to me and I, I too did not talk to them. On Monday, Richard with others came looking for me, but I said nothing to them. When it was the father's appointed time, as Richard continued talking, I looked at him and said, I have seen you as a child of God, and for that reason I am going to relate this news to you that immediately this court is banned. He listened with more attention, and when I told him that I know his father and mother, this weakened him, and immediately he was eager to hear more. Now, the father told him more and more about himself and his family, so he confessed that truly, I have attended a brotherhood battle at a papa and I asked, have you seen that? Richard went to Hadi Conley and related this story and Hadi Conley told him to handle the case the way he can. The majors and all top-ranking officers were informed and all they could say was that they had no concern with the case. The general further declared that he had nothing to do with the issue because they were the ones that arrested me and were enjoined to treat the matter the way they wished. Brethren, Finally, I was discharged with my companions. They did not say anything to me and I did not say anything to them. They did not beat me and I did not beat them. Brethren, I did not know what was responsible for all these. I had never undergone three days fasting, three days dry fasting, though the only thing was that right from my birth I had no place for food. I could stay on without food. If you give me one banana, that is sufficient for me. At this time, I did not know what was going on. I only came to realize that somebody was leading me and nothing can be an obstacle in my way, I have never thought of tomorrow or made plans for my journey. I did not take care of myself in any way. I could recall that 1944 was the year I put on a tie for the first and the last time. I had never attached any importance to all the ways of the world. None of these things impressed me. All I knew was to go as I am directed. And so, brethren, this is what I am learning. The importance and significance of God's time. 
of going on in obedience and fasting as I was being directed. In 1934, when I came here, the first soup I cooked, I used one penny to cook it and it sustained me for eight days. Food had no meaning to me. The first clothing I bought was worth five pence, of which one sleeveless shirt was worth one shilling and three pence. And these were my best clothes. I had never for one, I had never for once planned for myself. I never went on a journey with five shillings in my pocket to take care of my unforeseen occurrences. No, I move the way I am and go on my journey. I have no thoughts of tomorrow. Although I traded in clothes, but I was not interested in them. I had money around but I did not consider it important. Little did I know that Christ was leading me. Spiritual Chorus Somebody is leading me. Somebody is leading me. Somebody is leading me. Olumba, Olumba is the one leading me. Brethren, I did not eat fish or meat, or take wine. I overlooked all these things and went on like that. I did not know the meaning of all these things. I did not go on bicycle, travel by car, live in zinc-covered or brick house, or in a magnificent building. People often came to me and I offered prayers to them. I never walked in a group. And anything that had to do with gatherings was contrasting to my ways. If people walk towards the right, I walk opposite. When I examined myself, I found myself singled out in the community. In all these things, I was never interested in what was of interest to others. A beautiful house never attracted me. A permanent structure did not mean anything to me either. Visiting anyone did not mean anything to me. Although I was the patron to all these things, all these material things had no meaning to me. I had nobody I confided in and could not feel like discussing with anyone. I was always without a companion. I can recall that a relation of mine who was a teacher once came pleading with me to visit him. And this, to visit him at his residence, I refused and told him that I was not interested. When others prepared meals of fish and pleaded with me to eat of it, I always rejected and declared to them that I never had interest in such things. All these things were not made known to me until when I realized that Christ was leading me. The secret enemies of Christ. I relate this to you because many of you rain curses on anyone who advises you to undertake a one day fasting claiming that he has done wrong or evil thing to you let alone when you are asked to undergo three days dry fasting. You consider food, clothes, shoes and all other mundane things of this world much more important than practicing the injunctions of Christ. 
and little do you know that these things constitute great enemies of Christ. These are the things that drive away the Spirit of Christ from you, who among the whole inhabitants of the world realize that food, that the food you eat constitute the secret enemy of Christ. When you go through Philippians chapter 3 verses 17 to 20, you will realize that food and all other mundane things of this world such as houses, shoes, clothes, jewelry and so on are great enemies of Christ. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as ye have as so that so as ye have us for an example for many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things for our conversation is in heaven from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That was in Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 to 20. Brethren, food that is regarded as your main source of sustenance is the greatest enemy of Christ. I do not mean that you should not eat. Take a bath or put on, or put on shoes. But I am relating my true life experience. What happened on the evening that I last came was beyond expression. People believe that I had a spiritual charm that could make me abstain from food, from meat and fish. Eating a fish and meat, having intimacy with a woman, fornicating, consuming much food and wine is what drives away the spirit of Christ from you. The worldly people do not know this. Hence, they became more blindfolded and wander far away from Christ. If you establish a throne and adorn yourself with gorgeous apparel, all you will be doing is creating a gap of enmity between you and Christ. Because all the things you regard as important and interesting is what Christ dislikes. He wants none of these things. Hence, you are admonished that blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Brethren, I want you to realize that money, food, clothes, shoes, house, and all other mundane things that you regard as indispensable have no role to play in this kingdom of God. All that is counted important is for you to subject yourself to the will and services of Christ. That is why I have today decided to reveal the abode of Christ to you so that you may realize that this kingdom does not desire all those things that you claim to be important. Therefore, take note and watch anybody who has no interest in the mundane things of this world for such a person is the abode of Christ. If you find any person who is regarded by the world as fool, watch carefully, for such a person is the abode of Christ. But anybody that seeks is right, wears expensive dresses, and is boastful even on the street 
withdraw from such a person for such a fellow does not have Christ in him. A person that is possessed of Christ could be likened to a pregnant woman who only eats according to the desire of the fetus in her womb. Anything desired by Christ is what such a person puts his mind on. Christ demands that you should be humble so that you will be exalted. He has nothing to do with the world and its content. When Christ abides in a person, such a person acts according to Christ's desire because it is the Christ found in him that demands such a thing. Beloved, I have informed you earlier that I am not the one responsible for what is happening here. Rather, it is Christ who is doing all the works.